What's going on, guys? You know, we always got to start it with a good cup. And that one's good enough. I need another. Mm. Right on. All right. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> as you can tell by the title, I have a new piece of gear that I wanted to show you and talk about today. Um, before we get into that, for those of you that may be watching and it's your first time or <clears throat> you aren't familiar with this or haven't heard me say it in other videos, um, I make gear for a living. It's what I do. I have my own gear company, UW Gear. Um, I'm going on 13 years now of making and sewing gear. So, I want to get that out of the way up front. Not that it's a disclaimer or needs to be said. But just to give you a little context to where I'm coming from, uh, talking about stuff. As much as I like my own gear, as much as it is made for a specific use and specific target customer slash audience, there are also other companies' gear out there that I like and use. And <clears throat> when I find something that I like and I use, I'm going to bring it to you and talk about it. Even if it's technically a competitor of mine doesn't matter my my bottom line has always been and th this goes for both the business side as well as right here on alpha charlie side and if you're seeing this on both channels I'll, i'm probably going to put it up on both the, the business channel and and the alpha charlie my personal channel um I, I like to see people get good stuff that that's my whole point I want you, the unprepared citizen, I've been using that term forever, but just the, the average guy, to get good applicable gear for our uses and our purposes. Uh, my target is not military, it, it, it's not all the cool guys and stuff, which is why you don't see me doing all the, the flashy intros and such. There's no point in me doing that because that's not who I'm trying to reach. That's not how, who I'm trying to get my gear to. I'm trying to get it to you. Anyway, again, I say all that just for a little context so you know where I'm coming from on things. <clears throat> so, the Barrel and Hatchet Ghost Rig. I become aware of this rig um, quite some time ago now. Probably two years ago? I don't remember how long they've been selling them, but uh, I, I, I learned of them right, right after they, they brought them out. And I, and I thought they were pretty curious uh, and interesting because it had some similarities to some of my gear, but it also had some, some differences. Um, I have been wanting to get one uh, ever since I first saw them. Unfortunately, they've been relatively hard to get. Um, you got to kind of just keep checking to uh, see when they've got them in stock and when they didn't. And back in uh, December, I went and checked their website one day. They had some in stock, and lo and behold, they had it in my favorite. So I jumped on it real quick and bought one. <clears throat> um, I've been playing with it for a few weeks now. Uh, I've got some more things I want to try out with it and, and do with it. But... Bottom line up front, if you don't want to watch the, the whole video, I like the rig. Um, I like it a lot. Um, I think it's got some good features to it. I think there's a couple areas that, personally, I think might could be improved upon. They may feel differently, and, that, and that's fine. Again, a lot of it's going to come down to personal preference, personal uh, choice, all that kind of good stuff. So, what is the rig? Well, this is it. It is a chest rig that has three double mag pouches and shoulder harness. Now, that's what you get when you order it. Uh, they do have some uh, side pieces that will attach on here to add uh, extra capability should there be other pouches and whatnot that you want to add. But this is primarily what you get up front. So 
I'm gonna go over it uh, and, and and explain a few things, what it does, how it works, all that good stuff. Um, tell you what I like, tell you what I would personally kind of change. But for comparison's sake, this is one of my Minuteman Six rigs. Uh, basically the same concept. It's got three double mag pouches, and I've got two columns of molly on on either end of mine, and then just a regular H harness. Uh, there's a there's a similar. It's an H harness as well. That's probably the closest rig that I personally make uh, to this one. So just for comparison reasons, that that's kind of what I'll be uh, comparing it to. So in case you guys didn't know about mine, and I'm the world's worst about plugging my own gear, I admit it. What I do on my mag pouches is, is the closure is with a tuck tab. Again, I've been using that since 2011. Um, and on my double mag pouches, there is a small piece of Velcro. That is only to engage the flap after you have withdrawn one magazine and need to retain that second magazine so as to be able to move from point of cover to point of cover, uh, etc., and not lose that other magazine. Velcro is not the primary closure method, and it will not work with the Velcro with two mags in there. The tuck tab is the closure method. I seem to have to explain that all the time because people still can't get it. I digress. So that's how mine works. Theirs is very similar in that it's one of the first rigs that I've seen. Um, there are a couple of others, but there's one of the first that also uses a tuck tab. Bada bing. We will get into that in just a second. Um, as I mentioned, there is a shoulder harness. Um, let's, I'm gonna start at the shoulder harness and work my way down, if that makes sense. So the shoulder harness on theirs is a single piece of laser cut laminate Cordura. Um, that's really cool. I think that's a, a good place to, uh, to start with making a shoulder harness because it allows you to keep the, the material thin and lightweight and not bulky. <clears throat> I, I like that, that idea a lot. There is a secondary shoulder harness that um, I believe Winter Concepts has, and I believe Winter Concepts is who makes these for barrel and hatchet, but do not quote me on that. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I, I haven't ever actually reached out and asked. Um, and for the record, no, they don't even know that I am doing this video right now. So, surprise, guys. Um, the other shoulder harness that you can get has got uh, some more padding to it and a larger uh, rear section in the back back here, etc. cetera. Um, I like that good, good deal. On the front right here, there are some molly slots that are also laser cut. Um, I'm gonna throw my, my likes and pros and cons in as we go. So <clears throat> laser cutting, Molly slots is not anything super new. There, there's a number of companies that have been doing it for you know some years now. Personally, personal take, I am not a fan of uh, laser cutting Molly slots like this and trying to attach stuff for a couple reasons. Number one, for me, it's potentially a uh, point of failure right here because you're putting a lot of stress in these corners of the ends where the laser cuts are at. Now, that could be me worrying about nothing. I admit that up front. But it's something that percolates in the back of my head. But more importantly for me is if I attach anything up here on the shoulder harness, 99% of the time, it's not going to be with something that actually uses a molly strap. It's usually going to have to be something that's attached with paracord or shock cord or something like that. So when you do that, you're going to have paracord, shock cord, whatever on the underside of the shoulder harness as well. And then when you've got the shoulder harness up against you, whatever's running underneath here is going to be contacting you. 
it, it eliminates the smooth feature of a shoulder harness and has the potential to create uncomfortable spots, hot spots, etc. Especially if you put a pack on over it, which you are using a pack, right? Yes, you should be. So, personally, I would like to see them take and uh, just put some, uh, just sew on some molly webbing. Sewing on the webbing really isn't going to add a whole lot of time. Uh, I wouldn't think it, it, it doesn't for me uh, onto the shoulder harness. I think it would give you a little better attachment point. Uh, the, the laminated cordura is going to hold up just fine. You wouldn't have to do anything special, but then it would allow it to stay smooth up front. Again, I know that's not everybody's bailiwick. I'm just pointing it out there as a, as a personal, you know, not really a dislike, but just if I, if I had a choice, that's the way I would personally prefer it to be. Is it a big deal? Is it a problem in the long run? Maybe, maybe not. Um, it might be an annoyance for me and it might not for you. Your mileage may vary. As with the standard H harness, you've got your rear shoulder straps come down. Um, nothing, nothing strange there. Um, they do have one inch quick release buckles on the front. Uh, we'll get into that in just a second. Um, my only other druther about the shoulder harness is, and this is not unique to them, uh, this is something I have encountered in gear companies for 25 plus years. They make their shoulder harnesses way too long. Um, and that's just an opinion I'll hold forever because people try to wear their chest rigs down here on their belly it's not a belly rig it's a chest rig it should be up here on your chest okay if you want something down here get an LBE rig or something but putting something right over your stomach and diaphragm um, has never been a good thing for me I want it up on my chest that's why it's called a chest rig or I want it down around my waist, like what load bearing equipment would normally do. I never want anything down here. And that's where I see a lot of people running stuff at. I've seen it for years. I've talked about it ad nauseum in other videos. And half of you that are longtime subscribers are probably tired of hearing me go on about that. But it's a thing. Personally, I would like to see them shorten up the shoulder harness in the front so that it raises it higher up. And then for adjustment purposes for the larger barrel chested guys, give more webbing in the back. That way you can keep it up on your chest, big or small, and do all your adjustments in the rear. Again, just a personal preference. It does not mean that it's a failure or negative on, on the rig itself. Um, as an example, on my shoulder harnesses, the crossbar piece usually stays right up either at the upper part in between my shoulder blades or closer up to the neck. And that lets me keep the rig up on my chest and do all the other adjustment with the, the rear lower shoulder straps. On this one, for me to get it up in my chest, the rear part of the crossbar on the H harness is literally down in almost the middle of my back almost parallel with the, 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 the chest rig itself. Um, I'll try to put it on in a minute and show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so anyway, that's, uh, that, that's kind of the, the deal on that. Again, it might not be a big deal for you. It's just my two cents and I'm just throwing it out there. They can completely ignore it, not giving advice, just giving my thoughts. Yes, phone, I hear you. People never want to get a hold of me when I'm free. They always want to get a hold of me when I'm busy. It's almost like they know and are watching, which is highly possible. I digress. All right, moving on. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I already covered that. So just regular one-inch buckles on the side, uh, typical lumbar strap. One inch webbing buckles, good to go. Nothing, uh, 
nothing crazy or different or wild there. On the back of the rig, there is a huge uh, Velcro panel, and it comes with uh, it's male Velcro on the rig and a female Velcro panel right here to cover it up. Um, the one inch buckles right here and the Velcro are there to facilitate it to be used as like a placard on a chest rig where you can clip it in. Uh, again, personal preference. I can't stress that enough. I do not care for that kind of setup. I like my chest rig to be a chest rig. If I want a placard from a plate carrier, I get a placard from a plate carrier. I don't like crossing the two over because there's never going to be a time for me ever that I'm going to take this apart and put it on my plate carrier or take it off my plate carrier and try to put it back on here. I'm going to have my plate carrier set up and ready to go so that if I need it, I can grab it and put it on and go with it. I'm going to have my chest rig set up and ready to go so if I need it, I can grab it and put it on and go with it. I'm not switching back and forth. That's just me. Personally, I think it would be awesome if they would simply offer this rig without the Velcro and just offer a separate standalone placard with the Velcro. It would save you some money if you're wanting to use this as a placard, not having to buy and pay for the shoulder harness and lumbar strap and all that if it's not something that you actually ever intend to use in that manner. Just throwing it out there as a thought. Um, for me, what ends up happening is the rough Velcro, it just it creates a, an extra hot spot on an already hot enough area. Um, it, it is extra wear and tear on shirts and stuff when it moves around. It's just a thing that I found in my experience over a lot of years using this stuff. Um, moving on to the more important part of the rig. So, as I mentioned earlier, it does use a tuck tab for the closure. Now, their tuck tab system is uh, similar yet a lot different than mine. Um, I applaud the innovation. Um, I like, I like as arguably the first person to use tuck tabs on rigs. Um, I know it's been used in other fields, but I'm specifically talking about this setup. I'm glad to see other companies finally getting on board with it because personally, I think it's a superior closure method. Um, <clears throat> the way they did theirs, I use webbing and a sewn in tuck tunnel in webbing to make the uh, make the uh, closure. What they elected to do is sew in a single piece of Tegris, which I applaud. I think Tegris is definitely the way to go. And then they've got a piece of Tegris material right here that's sewn under some of that material. And that gives you the tuck tunnel underneath there. There is shock cord ran through there. And as you can see on the side right here, this is where the shock cord comes around. You've got a toaster toggle right there. If you're only running one magazine in here, you can take that and pull the shock cord and cinch the pouch down so that you only got one magazine in there. Now, when you do that, that means that the flap's going to be too long. The way they have accomplished that is the flap actually runs through a channel behind the mag pouch. This shock cord and toaster at the bottom of each mag pouch is hooked to the flap and you can pull that and it shortens the, the flap by pulling it down into the body of the rig and still maintains some elasticity, there's in big fancy college words, to be able to facilitate opening and closing it once you've cinched it down to one magazine. And that's the same for, for all three mag pouches. Um, what do I like and not like? Well, for me, one of the things that, that I guess you could say it bothers me, is having the toasters and the shock cord and everything coming out the bottom of the mag pouches. For me, I notice it a bunch right here on the bottom of my rib cage um, when I've got it on. It's not necessarily bad, but I notice it, and I especially notice it if I'm taking a knee and like hunching over to try to get get low in a, in a knee position behind, say, brush cover or whatever. 
I notice it. Is it is it major? No, it's more just kind of a noticing. Oh, I want to reach down there and like move it out of the way kind of thing. Um, is what it is. I, I think it's a, a pretty uh, a pretty clever way uh, for sure of of adjusting the flaps. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and I will throw this out there with all the shock cord on here, and there's a lot of shock cord because you got it around each mag pout plus the flaps. Um, if you're going to run this long term, if you are of the arm prepared citizen uh, mindset, and you want to be able to have you, this last you for an indefinite amount of time in a God forbid grid down bad situation, I would urge you to buy up some extra shock cord and have it on hand because shock cord will eventually wear out from various reasons it's not a big deal it's not expensive buy some keep it on hand if a piece wears out or breaks it's all easily replaceable on here not complicated at all you can put new shock cord in boom you're back up and running and everything's hunky-dory so just a point of note to, to keep into consideration. Um, I do like that on the bottom of the mag pouches, they laser cut drain holes. I really like that uh, instead of using grommets or anything like that. Same reason that on my mag pouches, I just sew in, and it's going to be hard for you to see on there, but there's a little hole right here on the back of the pouch that's a sewn in drain hole on mine. Don't like using grommets and stuff there that's too much of a tendency for them to rust, get caught on stuff, rip out, and then you've got a big ripped hole in your gear. Um, the laser cut here makes a lot of sense because there's no stress or pressure or anything right here. There's nothing pulling and tugging on it. Keeps it smooth, saves weight, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That's, that's a really, really good idea, uh, laser cutting those in there. Um, big, big thumbs up on that. Um, other point of note, just as a, a point for me <laughs> the flaps are really long now I am a huge fan of flapped rigs especially for the arm prepared citizen protecting and securing your magazines um, far outweighs any idea of any uh, desire or need to do super fast speedy uh, in your face speed reloads you can manipulate these just fine if you're properly utilizing cover and concealment so that's not an issue. However, their flaps are almost twice as long as my flaps. And I say my flaps because that's what I've got to compare it to. The reason that they're so long is because of how low they make the mag pouch itself. Um, they could, and I'm just throwing this out there, make the mag pouch a little higher and then that would allow the flap to be shorter. So when you go to change a mag, you've got less of this flopping around to, uh, to deal with. It's not a huge deal, but it, it's, it's there. For comparison, you can see how much shorter my flap is. Um, so like, you can see right here where the height of the magazine versus the top of the mag pouch. And then, again, this is what I've got to compare it to. I've got mine a lot, a lot deeper. These are still perfectly easy to pull out and get to, but you can save a little bit of length on the flap itself. Um, just like mine, you can take the flap and simply tuck it in the mag pouch or tuck it behind it or remove it all together if you wanted to. Um, I'm not a big fan of that, personally, but it's an option. And you could just go with hoping that the shock cord provides enough retention to keep magazines in there. That is up to you. It would also be pretty easy if you found yourself in a situation where you wanted to pre-stage a couple of mags open. You could. You can take the flap and tuck it back there and, and run with it. So that is a, an option as well. Um, last thing to point out, I think, so you'll notice that I've got 
that length pull tab and that's there. Now they do have a little hard piece sewn in there. I don't know if that'll pick it up. That makes for a really good grab, positive, but it is kind of short. So just a difference in length between the length of mine and, and length of theirs. Does it matter? Eh. That's all going to come down to personal preference as to whether it bothers you or not. Um, I would like them to be a little bit longer, but honestly, I can grab it and pull it pretty doggone quick. Um, probably quicker than I'll actually even need to in a real fight. Again, your miles may vary. Um, what else? That's really about it, guys. Um, tell you what, let me reconfigure the camera real quick, and I'll throw it on so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like when you've, when you've actually got it on. So stand by a second. All right. I'll start out with my rig on so that you can kind of see uh, how and where it rides. Uh, this is how I like for mine to be. Um, if, you'll, if you can see back there where the crossbar is at, uh, right here at the upper part in between my shoulder blades, that's where I kind of like it to be. Um, you, may, you may like having yours lower. It's up to you. I just find it more comfortable there. And then I can do all my adjustments with the rear straps back there as far as where I want it to ride at. But again, up on the chest, like the bottom of my rib cage is right here. Keeps it off my diaphragm, keeps it up here so I can bend, kneel, squat, do whatever, and it's all, all up out of the way and easy to, to get to and work with. So I just wanted to show you mine as comparison uh, right up front. Let me throw the ghost rig on real quick and you can see that. Okay. So now with the ghost rig on, you can kind of see where it rides and how it sets. Um, for comparison, you can see in the back, you see how much lower down the, the crossbar is on me to get it up to relatively the same spot. Um, again, that, that might not be a deal for you. It's just personal preference to for me. This is where I like to have mine at. But everything's right here. I can still get to everything and reload. Hunky dory fine, no issues. Um, she closes up good and again if you pull the mag out you only have one mag you can grab the shock cord pull it tight that'll sense the flap up for you um, on mine I just got the little velcro piece just two different ways of accomplishing the, the same thing um, and again like you can feel correction I can feel the the toasters and the shock cord right here it's not like digging in or rubbing. I just notice it and it keeps making me want to reach down there and fidget with it like something's out of the, something's not right. That, that's just me. You may not have any of that issue. So I won't say that you will notice it because you may not. Might just be a me thing. Highly possible, right? So what do I think of the rig overall? Well, I've been using it for a couple of weeks. Um, I really like it. Uh, again, there, there's a few druthers that I've got that I would do differently if I were doing it. I think they've done some, some pretty pretty innovative things. Um, the use of the Tegris and whatnot is pretty cool. I think that is a, a definite way to go. A suggestion I would make to them, sew some webbing around your tuck tabs to give them just a little more grip when they're inside the tuck tunnel and just to put a little more protection around the Tegris. That may or may not be a long-term issue, but just from a making it come out, the, the webbing around the Tegris is gonna make it a little more grippy. So there's less chance of it accidentally coming undone, but it won't slow down uh, the ability for you to open it at all. That would just be my two cents and the guys at Barrel and Hatchet may not ever even see this, and they might not care what some knucklehead goober up here's got to say. That's okay. Don't 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 bother me at all. Um, I like the rig. Um, they are one hundred and forty five dollars, and just so I don't tell you wrong, uh, they're available in Coyote, uh, God's ordained pattern of M eighty one, multi scam. I mean multi cam, um, multi cam Tropic, and Ranger Green. Again, you just got to keep checking the website to find when they're in stock and out of stock. Um, 
Price on them is $145, uh, and this is what you get for the $145. Again, there's side pieces you can get extra to go on. There's a different shoulder harness you can get, yada, yada. I like the low-profile nature of this shoulder harness because 99% of the time, I am going to be wearing a pack with this, be it my, in this case, my patrol pack, or whether it's longer range ruck or whatever. And once you start stacking shoulder straps on top of shoulder straps, things start to get bulky and start to get a pain in the butt when you're trying to trying to shoulder a rifle. So I like the low profile on the on the, uh, the rig itself. That's why I make mine low profile. But it works really well with a pack. It lets your chest rig do what the chest rig's supposed to do. Support your gun and keep it in the fight. Everything else goes in there okay just me um the width and everything lets it stay in between your shoulder harnesses or sorry your ruck straps whether it's again patrol pack larger longer range ruck whatever your, your flavor may be that all works out really well um, i like i like that setup is it right for you only you can tell i like it Overall, I want to use it some more. Um, in fact, I'm going to try to get some more footage for y'all um, out out in the field a little bit. Um, I've got some things I want to run and do with it. So if, if, if and as I can, I will do a follow-up for you and uh, get a little bit more use time in with it. Again, I've had it for a couple weeks and been playing with it. And I've, I've had one little quick trip out to the field with it, but I want to get some, some longer time. Um, it may or may not be right for you. Only you can decide that. So I would encourage you to go check it out. Again, I like seeing the tuck tab being introduced uh, by other companies. Um, I really think it's a, uh, and, I, and I'm completely biased, of course, but I think it's the way to go of making, making flat rigs going forward. And I think flat rigs are the way to go for the armed prepared citizen when you're thinking of long-term grid down, bad time stuff, which let's be honest, Long-term grid down bad time is the only time I'm going to be really likely to use this. Um, it's not going to be what I grab for somebody breaking in the house. Um, it's likely not what I'm going to grab right away, although there may be some argument that can be made, but likely not what I'm going to grab if, you know, there's a uh, uh, an active shooter in the Walmart parking lot or something. So... For those long-term grid down times as an armed prepared citizen, flapped is the, the way to go for me. Uh, but again, ad nauseum, I'm biased. I will put a link to uh, their uh, store in the description box. I'll also put a link to their YouTube channel. They got a big YouTube channel. They've got all the thousands of followers um, that I don't have, so I am relatively insignificant compared to their following but i'll put a link nonetheless so you guys can go check out uh what they're doing um again overall i like the rig the few things that i mentioned that i would personally do different are probably just personal druthers um your druthers may be different than my druthers who knows point always is to get the gear that's going to work for you in your situation once you get the gear for your situation that works for you, get out and train with it and use it. Dial it in. Get used to how it works, how it doesn't work. You know, uh, there is no substitute for getting out there and using the gear. Get applicable training, guys. Get applicable training for how and when you're likely to utilize this stuff. Just because it's a square range carbine class doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be 100% applicable to how we as armed prepared citizens are going to use this stuff. Whole nother video for a whole nother day. Take care. Stay safe as always, guys. Keep getting prepared. Keep getting ready. Clock is ticking. I'll see y'all another one.